Insight into President Trump's trial. I'm now joined by former federal prosecutor David Weinstein, partner with Jones Walker LLP. Uh, David, as always, it's good to have you. Let's start with jury selection. Uh, it, Dre was just laying out the seven jurors who have been chosen so far. You got a couple attorneys, an engineer, an oncology nurse, a teacher. Uh, what sticks out to you about the process in that group so far? Well, Marky, what sticks out to me is the presence of these two attorneys there. Look, as a trial lawyer, I'm reluctant to have an attorney sit on the jury because they're going to control what goes on inside that jury room, regardless of if they know anything about the particular case or how the system operates. And these two are civil juror, uh, civil lawyers, rather. Uh, the other jurors are going to look to them because, look, they're lawyers. They must know about what's going on here. And then in some ways, they're going to control what goes on in that jury room. So to me, I think the prosecution wanted someone in there so they could tell these other people that this is not about necessarily what happened and who was paid off, but rather the falsification process. On the defense side, they want somebody in there who's going to advocate for them and say that, look, this law is being applied inappropriately to the defendant. The prosecution isn't doing what they should be doing. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see just how long the deliberation process takes. Yeah, you make some good points about those uh, two attorneys there with everybody looking to them for guidance. I'd be eager to know a little bit more uh, about them and their background. Uh, David, according to new court documents, Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg would like to question Trump about 13 court rulings against him or his businesses if the former president takes a stand, uh, which is a move to question his credibility. Do you think that'll push Trump not to? Well, I think it's not only about his credibility. I think it's also about showing that this is not a mistake on his part and that he's engaged in this pattern and practice of behavior before. I think certainly it's going to be one of the overwhelming factors that they're going to have to consider as to whether they're going to put him on the stand. If he's on the stand, he has to ask, answer the questions he's being asked. And they are going to ask him, well, didn't you do this in the past? Wasn't your company found liable for falsifying records in the past? And the answer to that is whether he wants to admit it or not. Yes, they have been. So it's going to add to the danger element about putting him on the stand and potentially snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. The other question I had for you, just as a, a former federal prosecutor yourself, what are your thoughts on the fact that cameras aren't allowed in this courtroom? Is that a disservice to Americans, especially during an election year, do you think? Look, I think that being inside the courtroom and knowing what's going on and hearing what's happening there is important to all of us. The fact of the matter is, when you have cameras in the courtroom, people play to the cameras, and things get to be a little bit over the top. I think it's important for everybody to know exactly what happened inside, and that's why it's so important that the reporters you have on the ground there are able to be inside the courtroom, come back and tell us exactly what happened so people don't have to guess. But it goes both ways. Look, I've practiced in state court here where cameras are allowed in the courtroom. We saw what happened out in Los Angeles many years ago with the O.J. Simpson trial, and it adds this mm -hmm. sort of spectacle to the whole thing. So not having the cameras in the courtroom, it might make things a little calmer and certainly is going to add to the anonymity of the jurors in this case. Yeah, uh, well, I, I was curious to take your temperature on that. We'll see if uh, those five remaining jurors are selected and the six alternates um, that are still waiting to be chosen. David Weinstein, thank you so much as always. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.